Welcome to the lecture series of Operating System. Myself, Mongshumi Shaha, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Engineering Department from Narula Institute of Technology. Today, we discuss about Priority Scheduling Algo. Okay, in our previous class, we discussed some non-priority scheduling, uh, non-preemptive scheduling and preemptive scheduling. Under non-preemptive scheduling, we discuss about first come, first serve, shortest job first, and uh, in sh preemptive scheduling, we discuss in sh shortest remaining time first, round robin. Okay, and today we discuss priority scheduling. What is priority? A priority. A is a number of integer associated with each process. The larger CPU bus have the lower priority. Generally, the larger CPU bus have the lower priority. The CPU is allocated to the process with the highest priority, uh, like uh, which is uh, the smallest number, smallest integer number is considered as highest priority and highest integer number is considered as the lowest priority in priority scheduling starvation can happen okay uh, in starvation what happened a lower priority process never may execute okay all time the higher priority processes get the chance for execution and lower priority processes waited in finite time so this condition is known as starvation and the solution of starvation is aging. What happened in aging? As time progress, the increase the priority of the process. Okay, if some a process having lower priority, uh, it uh, don't get chance to execute. So what happened? After a time interval, the priority of the particular processes increases. So after some time, it got the highest priority and then it execute so there a example of non preemptive sh priority scheduling is there okay uh, in this problem five processes are there and their burst time their arrival time is not given that means all the process come in ready queue at zero okay and their priority is also given that is 3, 1, 4, 5, 2. Okay. So first draw the NAT chart. According to this chart, according to this chart, uh, the P2 have the highest priority 1, then P5 got the second priority. So uh, P2 got the P5 got the second chance. Then priority 3. P1 having the third the highest priority. So after P2 and P5 execute, P1 will got the chance. After that P3 executes and last P4 will execute. So now look at the chart. First priority wise P2, then P5, then P1, then P3, then P4. Okay, this is the sequence. So at 0 millisecond, P1 starts his execution. At 0 millisecond, P1 starts his It takes 1. It's ex burst time is 1. So it takes 1. So 0 to 1, P2 executes. After that, after context switching, P5 got the chance. Now, P5 starts from 1. It's burst time means execution time is 5 millisecond so from 1 to 6 millisecond p5 executes okay now two process executes third priority is p1 so third uh, p1 starts his execution at 6 millisecond it's having burst time 10 so from 6 to plus 10 16 p1 executes after this priority 4 okay p3 have priority 4 so p3 executes is execution time is 2 so from 16 to 18 millisecond p3 executes and lastly 
ठीक है P4 executes, its execution time is 1, so from 18 to 19, it's executed. Now, we have to calculate the average waiting time. Okay, so the waiting time of P1 is, P1 got chance at 6, so 6 minus 0, that is 6. For P2, P2 starts at 0, and its arrival time is also 0, so 0. And P3. For P3, P3 starts its execution at 16 milliseconds and its arrival time is 0. So, the waiting time of P3 is 16. The waiting time of P4 is 18. And the waiting time of P5 is 1. So, the average waiting time is 6 millisecond plus 0 millisecond plus 16 millisecond plus 18 millisecond plus 1 millisecond divided by number of process. Here number of process is 5. So first we have to add all the waiting time of all processes and then divided it to number of process that is 5 and we got the result 8.2. Okay. Now we have to calculate the turnaround time. So first we have to calculate individually. So P1's turnaround time is 16 because p1 completed its execution at 16 okay so first here p2's finishing time is 1 and starting time is 0 so p2's turnaround time is 1 p5's turnaround time is 6 because its arrival time is 0 and it finishes its job at 6 millisecond to p5's turnaround time is 6 then P1, P1's turnaround time is 16 minus 0. 16 is P, uh, finishes time and 0 is arrival time. P1's arrival time is 0, so 16. And P3's finishing time is 18 and P3's arrival time is 0, so 18 minus 0. Its turnaround time is 18. And for P4, the finishing time is 19, arrival time is 0. So 19 minus 0 that is 9. So first we have to add all the turnaround time and then divide it into number of 5. So we got the average turnaround time. Here the average turnaround time is 12. So that is an example of non-preemptive priority scheduling. Now we'll take an example. We look at example where preemptive type scheduling is there. So here uh, four processes there. Their arrival times are different 0, 4, 6, 8. So, first process come in ready queue at 0 millisecond, second process arrive at 4 millisecond, third process arrive at 6 millisecond, and fourth process, fourth and last process arrive at 8 millisecond. And their burst times are 5, 8, 2, 6. Okay. And their priority is also given that is 2, 1, 4, 3. So, now first we have to draw the NAT chart. So first, at 0 millisecond, there is only one process. Okay, so, so P1 starts his execution at 0 millisecond. Okay. It executes at, so from 0, 1, 2, 3, there is no other processes. So P1 executes. Okay. It's having priority 2, but there is no other processes. So, P1 continue execution. Okay. So, at 4 millisecond, one new process arrive in the ready queue. Now, we have to compare P1's priority is 2 and the process which enter next, that is P2, its priority is 1. So, it's have the greater priority, higher priority than P1. So, at 4 millisecond, it switches from P1 to P2. Okay. So, it switches P1 to P2. So, P2's burst time is 8. So, from 4 plus 8 means after 12 millisecond, P2 executes. Okay. P2 got the chance when it arrives. It's having a highest priority. So, it got the chance and it executes its burst time. Total burst time is still completed. And after 12 millisecond, it finishes its job. Now, at 12 millisecond, already P3, P4 are also arrive. Okay. So, P3 having priority 4 and P3, P4 having priority 3. So, now we have 3 processes. P1, P3, P4. 
P1 already 4 millisecond executes and its remaining burst time is 1 millisecond. Okay, its remaining burst time is 1 millisecond. So now, among these three, P1, P3, P4, P1 having the highest priority. So P1 got the chance from 12 to 13, P1 executes. Okay, then P1 finishes, P1 terminates. Now, from uh, we have to check P3 and P4. So P4 having priority 3, so P4 got the chance first. After P1 finishes at 13 millisecond, P4 starts his execution. Its burst time is 6, so 13 plus 6 up to 19 millisecond, P4 executes. And it after finishes, it terminates. Then we have only one process that is P3. It's having priority 4, that is the highest among all. So P3 starts his execution, its burst time is 2, so from 19 to 2, it's executed. Now we have to calculate the average waiting time. So the average waiting time of P1 is at 0 millisecond, it comes to the ready queue at 0 millisecond, it starts its execution. So its waiting time is 0 plus at 4 millisecond, it exits from the running state and go back to the waiting state or ready queue. Okay. So from 4 to 12, P1 process wait so 12 minus 4 this 8 millisecond p1 waits so that is also p1's waiting time now p2 arrive at 4 millisecond and start at 4 millisecond so p2's waiting time is 4 minus 4 that is 0 p2 no need don't need to wait whenever it comes it's having the highest priority so it got the chance so 0 now p3 P3 starts his execution at 19 millisecond, but it P3 comes at ready queue at 6 millisecond. So from 6 millisecond to 19, it waits. So 19 minus 6, that is the waiting time of P3. Now P4, P4 starts his execution at 13 millisecond and it arrives at ready queue at 8 millisecond. So 13 minus 8, that is 5 is its waiting time now we have to add this value and divide it into number of four so we got average waiting time so 8 plus 0 plus 13 plus 5 these are the waiting time of p1 p2 p3 p4 and uh, divided by number of process so we got the average waiting time that is 6.5 millisecond now we have to calculate turnaround time so the turnaround time of The turnaround time of P1 is, okay, it finishes at 13 and comes at 0. So, we can calculate through this formula finishing time minus arrival time. And there is another formula that is the waiting time and the burst time. Okay, if we add the waiting time, okay, how may, much time it wait for? got the chance and its execution time that is burst time so the the total time is known as turnaround time so p1's waiting time is 8 and its burst time is 5 so 5 plus 8 that is 13 here we can check finishing time minus arrival time that is 13 minus 0 that is also 13 so p1's turnaround time is 13 again for P2, finishing time is 12, arrival time is 4. So, 12 minus 4, that is 8. Okay. 12. And that is finishing time minus arrival time formula. And we can use the worst time. That is, worst time is 8 and its waiting time is 0. So, 8 minus 0. It is turn Its turnaround time is 8 plus 0. Its burst time plus its waiting time. Now for P3, P3 completed at 21 and it comes at 8. So 21 minus 8 that is 13. Okay. So that is 13.
sorry for for p3 for p3 that is 19 minus 6 so 19 minus 6 is 13 or is waiting time plus arrival time and for 21 minus p3 is 21 minus 6 p3 p3 is, is finishing time is 21 minus 6 so that is 15 okay p3 is turnaround time is 15 21 is finishing time and arrival time is 6 so 21 minus 6 is 15 and we can also calculate by its burst time and waiting time is burst time is 2 and waiting time is 13 so 13 plus 2 that is also 15 okay and for p4 finishing time is 9 arrival time is 8 so 11 okay or we can calculate its waiting time is 5 and its burst time is 6 so 6 plus 5 that is also 11 okay so 13 plus 8 plus 15 plus 11 divided by number of process so the value is 11.75 so that is the example of preemptive scheduling here there is only one process that execute or whenever a higher priority process enter it switches from first process to second process so priority can, scheduling can be non preemptive it can be preemptive also so the advantage of priority is it is easy to use it is very much user friendly here aging the solution of starvation is aging that means at as time increases the increases of priority of a process so that process is got chance for execution simplicity is another advantage of priority suitable for application with varying time and resource requirement and uh, the disadvantage of priority queue is if a system eventually crash all the low priority process get lost okay and indefinite block or starvation can happen also in priority scheduling each process is assigned a numeric priority cpu is allocated the process with highest priority can be external or internal okay that is based on the user or admin or based on resource or history shortest job is a priority scheduling where priority is predict in the basis of cpu burst time the priority scheduling may be preemptive or non preemptive okay so that is the conclusion priority scheduling is not fair why because starvation is possible the low priority process may never execute Okay, we have already discussed the low priority processes may never execute can be made fair using aging. But if we use aging, so we can uh, uh, withdraw the starvation problem. To overcome the starvation problem, we can use aging. Aging is a technique for gradually increasing the priority of a process. So that is waiting for the system for long time okay so that is the end of our cpu scheduling okay already discussed we already discussed about first come first serve shortage job shortest remaining time round robin priority then multi-level queue scheduling multi-level feedback queue scheduling so these are the cpu scheduling algo okay so uh, thank you for listening if you have any query you can contact me this is my mail id feel free to contact me and we will meet you soon in the next lecture